past week I had this dream and in this dream I was getting ready to get some work done. I was gonna specifically get 360 lipo and a tummy tuck. The funny part about that is, is in real life I always make jokes with my friends about how you know when I get the money I'm gonna go get the work done. You know I'm gonna get snatched a little bit when I'm done having kids. I'm gonna get my body. I'm gonna go under the knife and have them you know fix me up. I had this dream that I was getting ready to get exactly that. The things that I had been speaking, you know, over my life for a while, you know, and I was hyped. You know, I was ready to get the work done. They was marking me up, preparing me to get surgery. I was ready, y'all. I was ready to have the body that I finally thought that I wanted. When I get to the operation room, I get scared. I get scared. Your girl gets scared. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think I want to do this. Like, I don't think I want to do this. It was nice to think about. The results are nice to look at, but actually undergoing the knife, getting put to sleep, getting cut up, mutilating my body for the sake of an image that was pushed on me by the world, I don't think it's worth it. Well, I told them, forget it. I don't want this cosmetic surgery anymore. Like I told them, like, don't give me the tummy tuck. Just do the 360 lipo. And even with the 360 lipo, I don't even think I got that either. I ended up walking out of the operating room like gown on and everything i'm like yep nope i can't do this and so after that i woke up and i woke up and chuckled a little bit because i was just like this is not the typical dream that i have like so i kind of just let it be but as the week passed i started seeing videos about um cosmetic surgery and how we shouldn't be getting it and how dangerous bbls are and seeing all these videos and i'm like lord are you trying to communicate something to me you know what are you trying to say when i was in the house he gave me this revelation enemy will play on your insecurities to make you think you need to do something to risk your life to feel secure within yourself instantly made me think of like matthew 4 verses 5 through 11 when satan had took jesus high on the mountaintop right and he told him to jump off he told him to jump off and allow the angels to catch him and save him he says then the devil took him up into the holy city him wait then the devil took him up into the holy city set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down for it is written he shall give his angels charge over you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against the stone jesus said to him it is written again you shall not tempt the lord your god again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and he said to him all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. That passage came to me immediately, like thinking of that. When the Lord said that the enemy will play on your insecurities to get you to compromise yourself. He tried to get Jesus to prove himself to, to Satan, you know, prove yourself to me. Prove that you are who you say you are, even though Satan knew exactly who he was. But he's like, if I can get him to jump off this cliff, I could probably get him to end his life. The angels might save him. They might not. But I'm putting him in this position to be compromised. That's what a lot of us do when we go get these unnecessary cosmetic surgery. And pray and say, Lord, keep me during this surgery. Protect me during this surgery. But we're jumping off the cliff. We're jumping off the cliff to have a look that the world is pushing on us, right? We're jumping off a cliff, hoping that the angels will keep us safe as we jump off this cliff, as we mutilate our bodies, as we do all these things to look good. Even though the Lord is like, you don't need to do this. It's not something that you need to do. And the Lord was really heavily dealing with me because it's something that I would speak out of my mouth all the time, that I was willing to mutilate my body. I was willing to undergo the knife. I was willing to, you know, even in my mind, because it always starts as a thought, to slice myself up, to look good and have a, have a look that I felt like I should have, you know, and that didn't come natural to me. And the Lord is like, no, this is not what I want for you. This is not what I want for my people. I don't want my people to constantly risk, risk their lives to have a look that's not even natural to them. I don't want them to mutilate themselves. I don't want them to have to feel like they have to risk their lives to look good. You know, when they already look beautiful to me, if he dresses the lilies, how much more will he clothe you? You know, the Lord is just like, love yourself. Love yourself enough to understand that every time we feel like we need cosmetic surgery, we're willing to risk our lives, you know, thinking and assuming that the Lord is going to protect us during these procedures. But sometimes 
people don't make it out of these procedures because they compromise themselves you know things happen on the operating table and it's kind of like why would you want to be there if you don't have to i think we're so desensitized and numb to how dangerous these things really are because we're just so obsessed with looking a certain way that we don't even realize that we're literally jumping off the cliff we don't even realize that we're jumping off the cliff just hoping that god and his angels keep us that they protect us while we jumping off cliffs risking our lives just in hopes that the Lord don't let nothing happen to us while we out here risking our lives. But really was heavily dealing with me, like don't do this. Cause at some point, the Lord is gonna give me that money. The Lord is gonna have a lot of money in my pocket to where I can go do those things. But he's telling me, I don't want you to do it. And I'm telling you this now, so when you get that money, you're not even thinking I'm gonna go on that table. I'm gonna go call these doctors to go on this operating table. If you don't need to go under the knife, you don't need to go under the knife. The word today is saying, don't do it. Don't get the cosmetic surgery. If it's not something that you need, don't do it, okay? Don't do it. As simple as that dream was, it had so much meaning, okay? I encourage you to go back and look at Matthew 4, verses 5 through 11, and read through that and study it and really meditate on that. And understand that every time we push ourselves to go under the knife or risk our lives, that we're jumping off a cliff expecting God to keep us while we're risking our lives. And Satan is basically playing on a lot of our insecurities in the U.S. right now, all over the world, saying, you need these things. You need these things. You need these things. You need these fillers. You need that butt. You need that flat tummy. You need a breast augmentation. Nobody's going to love you if you look like this. You're not going to get enough attention if you don't look like this. Nobody's going to love you the way you deserve to be loved if you don't look like this. You know, the enemy is really playing on our insecurities and getting us to risk our lives for the sake of having a worldly image that's not even natural, that's not even real. Um, not for everyone, at least. It's natural for some people, but not for all. The Lord is saying today, like, release cosmetic surgery. And on top of that, it's addictive. People get cosmetic surgery and they don't ever stop. Like, some people get it once and they leave it at that. But people get tummy tucks and they get in the BBL. And then they get in, um a breast augmentation and then they get lip fillers and then they're getting their nose done and then they're getting breast implants they start getting addicted to cosmetic surgery to the point where they mutilate themselves to the point where they're unrecognizable where it may look good on some people it looks atrocious on other people but they think they look good they think they look good they've mutilated themselves so much it's like they don't even look like the version of them God created. Why you see Black China got all those fillers removed while she was doing She had some conviction in her spirit about that. The Lord was dealing with her on that. He's like, take that stuff out of you. Told her she was mutilating herself. It's no coincidence that the Lord gave me this dream. At first, I just thought it was a silly dream. But the Lord was like, it's not silly. It's urgent. I need you to release it to my people. And if you've ever thought about getting cosmetic surgery, go to the Lord about it. I'm pretty sure he's going to tell you no. Um... Ask yourself why you feel like you need it, you know? Um, do you really need this or do you just want it? And I had to ask myself that as well. Do I really need this or do I just want it? You know, why am I even speaking this out of my mouth? Why am I speaking out of my mouth? Yeah, girl, I'm about to go get this surgery. I'm about to go under the knife to go get this done. And really translating that in the spirit is saying, I'm getting ready to risk my life for a look. I'm getting ready to risk my life for a look, not even really understanding like what I'm saying, you know? Um, and I know the Lord doesn't want me to do that. So I encourage you all to take this back to the Lord. I don't know who this is for. I don't know if there's anybody on my channel who's trying to get cosmetic surgery. Um, but don't do it. Ms. Abrea Serenity. I try to upload every, I to upload every Wednesday and every Sunday, but as of lately, things in my life have been taking a turn. So I try to upload when I can, but I love you all with the love of the Lord and I'll see you all next time.